Let's take a look at this problem, taken from the AIMD 2007. It says, let f be a polynomial with real coefficients, with f of 0 equals 1, f of 2 but plus f of 3 equals 125. Find the value of f of 5, if f satisfies f of x times f of 2x squared equals f of 2x cubed plus x. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. Since f is specified to be a polynomial, it's very natural to consider um, some roots of this polynomial. So I shall start by considering a real root of f. Then I put this r into the equation, x equals r, and I have f of r times f of 2r squared equals f of 2r cubed plus r. And because this term is 0, so f of 2r cubed plus r is equal to 0 as well. Now this implies that 2r cubed plus r is also a root of f. And I put this again into the equation. And I have something like this. Um, should be something even more complicated. And I know that this would then also be a root of f. Now you can see that if I keep doing the same thing inductively, I can say that for this function or this polynomial, no matter how I iterate uh, through this polynomial, I will still get a new root. where I define this notation by n times iterating f p by n times. However, this is actually um, uh, this is actually absurd because now I have an infinite sequence of roots. So given that r is real, then 2r cubed plus r must be um, having a greater absolute value than r. And by iterating, I know that um, the roots have an is an increasing sequence in terms of modulus. So it will go forever, and it contradicts the fact that um, there are actually finitely many uh, number of roots uh, in F. Not just increasing, but strictly increasing. And so the only conclusion we can make at this point is that F has no real roots, no real root. So as I said, we have no real root for this uh, polynomial F, so we have to turn to complex numbers. So before moving on, allow me to introduce the tools that I'm going to use, which is the first one is to remind you the concept of um, conjugate, is that for a complex number Z, if it's of, the, of this form, e, Z equals X plus I, Y, then Z conjugate, or we pronounce it as z bar equals to x minus i y and if we um, put conjugate values into uh, the polynomial the outcome are also conjugates the second tool is the triangle inequality which deals with the modulus of um, of a complex number so let me consider The complex, the complex root 
with the largest modulus. Then we know that uh, from re uh, results above, 2s cubed plus s is another root. Before calculating the modulus, notice that because we have f of 0 equals 1, so that means f of 0 is actually uh, the constant term, so we can, we can say that the product of the roots must be either 1 or minus 1, which means product of the modulus of the roots is equal to 1. Now we have the product of all the roots to be uh, to have modulus 1. So um, you can imagine that some of them has to be larger than 1 and some of them has to be smaller than 1. So the product is then balanced. So uh, it's natural to assume that this, uh, this S has modulus to be greater than 1. If the modulus of S is greater than 1, then we know that the modulus of 2S cubed plus S is actually equal to the product of the modulus of S and 2S squared plus 1. Because uh, product of the modulus is equal to the modulus of the product. So I can factor out the S, the S in 2S cubed plus S. However, notice that 2s squared plus 1 can be rewritten as the difference of 2s squared and 1 from the final inequality that we have, I've introduced above. And that's equal to 2 times the square of modulus of s minus 1. And we know that because s, uh, the modulus of s is larger than 1, so this is actually greater than modulus of s. This term is greater than 1. So we found out that the modulus of another root, 2s cubed plus s, is greater than the modulus of s, which we assume that to have the maximum modulus. So here's a contradiction. It actually contradicts the maximality of S. So that means the modulus of this um, of the root with the greatest modulus is not even uh, greater than one. So that means all the roots of F has modulus to be exactly equal to one. After knowing the fact that all the root, uh, mod, uh, roots have modulus to be equal to 1, then I'm going to put x equals to the square root of r over 2 into the equation, where f of r equals 0. Then f of square root of r over 2 times f of 2 times r over 2 equals f of 2 times the cube of the square root plus the square root itself. And simplifying, we have this at the right hand side. And because f of r is 0, so left hand side is the whole thing of left, at left hand side is equal to 0. So then 0 equals to f of r plus 1 times the square root of r over square root of 2, which means this is also a root of f. 
Now, because all the roots have modulus equal to 1, so I can say that this is equal to 1. And because uh, modulus of R is equal to 1, so the square root of that also has modulus equal to 1. So we have this. So that means the modulus of r plus 1 equals square root of 2. And I can square both sides and rewrite the square of the modulus into the product of the complex number itself and its conjugate. And as I said, um, you do the conjugate on the whole thing, it's actually equivalent to doing the conjugate on each term. So I can expand the whole thing. And beware that the modulus of r is equal to 1 because r is a root. So that means r plus the square, the conjugate of r is equal to 0. This is equal to 1. Now combining the, the fact that um, r times r bar is equal to 1 and r plus r bar equal to 0. So that means minus r square equal to 1. Or I can add one more step, which is a minus r bar equals minus r. So that means r is equal to plus or minus i. So I found out that plus or minus, plus or minus i are the only roots of f because r is arbitrary and I let r be a root of f and somehow I could uh, I managed to solve that r could only be plus or minus i. So these are the only roots of f. Now we've come this far, knowing that um, this polynomial only has roots plus or minus i, so I can let f of x to be equals to x squared plus 1, whole thing to the power n, sum natural number n. And because f of 2 plus f of 3 is equal to 125, now this condition finally comes into play. We know that 5 to the n plus 10 to the n equals 125 and we can just simply do some guess and check and know that n is equal to 2 so therefore f of x is equal to x squared plus 1 whole squared of course you can check by putting that into f I shall omit this in this video you can check it yourself and finally so f of 5 equals to 5 squared plus 1 whole squared is 676 and that's our final answer I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you for your support. See you next time.